uh, Michelle adjusts bulge at Harvard. Undeniable proof, closest view on YouTube. Not sure about undeniable proof, but it looks a little, yeah, battle of the bulge. <laughs> Maybe a snake in the pants. <laughs> Yeah, what are you doing fucking around with cobras, bro? Yeah, you don't fuck with snakes, man. No, you're going to get fucked up. It's uh, it's, it's not a good way to be. Uh, Seem to be fighting her underpants. Uh, so it's a very quick clip, but then they replay it, so. Just grabbing hold of that. <laughs> I mean, dudes do that all the time. Yeah. You, know, you reach into you, you're in public. You kind of reach into your pockets. Yeah. And you kind of like reposition your nuts if you can't do anything. About it gets it. quite uncomfortable. It can. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Bap, bap, bang, it. There's like three or four videos. Yeah. There we go. How do you hide a hog like that? I'm just saying. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. Listen. Is that a lizard in your crotch, or are you happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, cunt spiracy theory? Or a a logical phallus E? <laughs> I'm going to have to go with phallus E. <laughs> Somebody adjusting their uh, P. Nice. Yeah. And the reason I use that word, it's important. For a man to be able to stand up and pee nice. Exactly. Now, it's, if the easy. little head takes control and you start throwing that in all kinds of, uh, you know, unmarked dangerous tunnels, yep. well, you just don't know what's going to happen. You might wind up with a penis worm. Yeah, and then you won't be peeing nice anymore. No. You could probably gonna, pee yourself some fire. You're going to get rotted off the range. Maybe some parasitic worms. You're going to get pills, shots, and a harsh talking to by your medical professionals. Not that he would know or anything. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, but one of my favorite things, even Vice had to admit, now this is about 11 years ago at this point, almost, but they had to admit that there may actually be some validity to the whole uh, you know, alphabet Barry. Well, there's, there's pictures of him hanging out with Mike. Yep. And you look at Mike's face, It's I de it, it is it is Mike yeah. Michelle. Well, I mean, whatever, I. But here it is. This man has proof that Obama is gay. And now, the it's a, it's a long interview, and it kind of goes on and on. But the part that I found the most interesting, the most damning piece of testimony many people have heard, is this guy named Larry Sinclair, who claims to have had not one but two trysts with uh, the former cuckmander in chief himself. And you know, he could be a shyster. But here's the really interesting part. This guy, I think it was Jerome Corsi, was writing a book about Obama called The Abomination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Uh, now he's talking about the rumors and everything. One of the first people to talk about this was Larry Sinclair, right? Can you tell me more about him? He wrote a book about having two alphabet trysts with uh, Obama in 1999 when he was a state senator. Larry's not the most reliable of sources, though. He's a self confessed fraudster watered in Arizona. Yes, I didn't believe everything he said. But his story was always consistent. Also, a guy called Daniel Parisi brought a defamation suit against Larry for writing the book, but a federal district judge threw it out. Yep. Well, typically, if there's truth to there, they usually will shut the lawsuit down. Yes. Because if you speak the truth and you have proof, you really can't get hammered for uh, slandering anyone. Yeah, exactly. Truth is the truth is never slander. Yep. And if you guys have not seen that particular interview, here it is right here. It's on Rumble, and of course, all these sources are available on redonculus.com, So let's check it out. Limo and left, and we started drinking. Uh. I started snorting. He started smoking. I actually put my hand on his knee and started to rub up his thigh. And I performed oral sex on Barack Obama. The following day, I actually get a knock on my hotel room door in Gurney, Illinois, only to find Barack Obama standing in front of it. He had actually come back for seconds. I performed oral sex on him in the hotel room at the Comfort Inn and Suites in Gurney, Illinois. God Were there drugs involved in the second night as well? There was. Who produced those? He actually brought those with him. 
Now, Obama at that time... Was- How Cosby of him. Uh-huh. <laughs> Listen, um, all right. It In the gay community, the bi community, and those swinger whatevers, drugs are very prevalent. Oh, yeah. Big time. And I, and I would say right behind that is heavy out al- heavy alcohol use. Yeah, and, and especially it seems like the richer you are, the, the the more these things tend to find their way into your social circle. Yeah, like when people are like, "Well, you know, Bill Cosby obviously must have done something wrong because he admitted to giving drugs to women." Like in the seventies, that was like <laughs> SOP. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> listen, I talked to my my mother. She's seventy eight. And uh, when I was younger, she she used to go out and party, you know. And when I turned about, uh, I came back from the Army, I was about 24, 25, and I'd be like, hey, Ma, you know, what was the drug scene like in the 70s? (laughs) And she says, like, you know, I'd go to some parties, and literally there'd be people walking around with pills and and joints. Yeah. You know, know, booger sugar. It's like an hors d'oeuvre. Every once in a while, you still see that today. I've seen it at weddings that I've shot. Yeah, that's crazy, but, you know. There was a time, it was down at uh, one of these wedding mills in Livonia. A wedding mill? Yeah, it's Burton Manor. Like they, they can do like three to four weddings there a night and clear, I don't know, how many thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, in between <clears throat> ceremony and reception, after the picture stuff, they decided they were going to go hang out on the party bus. Well, apparently on the party bus, there was this dude with an Altoids container full of ecstasy and, and numerous other shit. So by the time they got to the reception, the groom was completely blitzed off of his ass. Nice. They do the cake feeding, and then he grabs a piece of pineapple from for, from the chocolate fountain, dips it in there, and then he starts going for my camera. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And then he's like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you fed me a piece of chocolate-covered pineapple. The DJ's laughing his ass off, and I walk over, I'm like, what the hell is going on? He's like, you didn't smell the weed when they came off the bus? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then sure enough, I... Uh, Getting guest interviews out on the patio later on. There's that dude with the Altoids containers passing out ecstasy pills. So many people were dropping drinks on the dance floor that night. They just had one wet floor, so they just moved it around to the most freshly spilled drink. Yep, yep. And listen, man, that drug thing is, was, I mean, it's pretty big, especially now that marijuana is legalized mm-hmm. in most states. And uh, Standard movie nights. I, like, I've never, ever, not one time in my life, smoked marijuana. But the gummies help you sleep. Yes, they do. And I had a hard time finally accepting the fact that, you you know, Pop. It's better than booze. You're not in the (laughs) Army anymore. You don't have to worry about the piss test. True. I'm like, yeah, I know. But, you know, and then the alcohol thing was just getting out of hand, and I needed to change up. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for support or Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.